Hi everyone, I'm here with Dr. John Diard, a really good friend of mine. I've known him since the early 80s. He was a professional triathlete when I was. Um, he was in, we were both in California and we became great friends. He introduced me to Ayurvedic. He's now, he's an Ayurvedic doctor and he's written the book Body, Mind and Sport. Um, which is something that I, I learned a lot from and I used in my career and it really helped me a lot and I can't wait to introduce you to him because he's like a wealth of information. He's so amazing on every single level and um, everything that he's going to tell you today uh, you're going to love and you're going to use and it's going to help you for sure. So John, something that uh, has happened to me in my life because now I'm in my 50s is that um, I went through menopause and it was like a living hell. In fact, my husband told me during the time, he goes, Colleen, who are you and what have you done with my wife? You're <laughs> like, you're not yourself. <laughs> who are you? I mean, it was like a roller coaster. And all through my racing, I was really into health and wellness and, and fitness, but mostly it was health. So I wanted to be healthy. And um, that's kind of where I came upon meeting up with John. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to learn about um, how he can help with menopause. So. What is the Ayurvedic perspective on menopause and how can you help with that? Well, you know, there's so many factors, but I think one of the most important things that we want to know about, you know, menopause and making the transition is what's really happening is your, your ovaries are retiring and they're not making hormones any longer and they're moving the manufacturing site to Mexico and they have no idea how to make hormones. Now your skin's got to make it, your liver's got to make it, and they're like, we don't know what we're doing. So it's going to take a while for that to transition. And a lot of times what happens is the body, and during that process, the waste that, the, that, that should be moving out during menstruation, and you're starting to lose potency or power during menstruation, during perimenopause, all that goes back to your liver. And your liver's going like, whoa, wait a minute, this is not my job. And the liver becomes overwhelmed, and that actually, Ayurvedically, is what a hot flash is. A hot flash is when the liver becomes overwhelmed, and it, and it gets congested. And Ayurveda, we say, it's sort of like, it's sort of like a wind blowing on a fire, which is your liver, and then bringing heat up into your head, making oh, you look wow. crazy. From a Western medical perspective, that means your liver is getting congested from toxins coming from your reproductive organs and your eliminative intestinal organs, which is very real, up to like 95% of your bile goes back to your liver, wow. carrying a bunch of toxins with it. And during menopause or perimenopause, that, that happens more. So the liver's going, you gotta be kidding me, this is way too much. And it becomes, it congests your liver and thickens your bile. Now your bile is like a Pac-Man in your liver, pac man a bunch of yuck. And when you eat some fatty food, all that bile goes into your gut to take the to all the toxins to the toilet. But during menopause, when liver gets congestion, that congested, that doesn't happen. And then all the toxins build up on your liver, go into your blood, and they start to create a lot of heat or a lot of acidity in your blood, and that causes a hot flash. So the best way to deal with hot flashes is to really look at why is my body not moving the waste out through the normal channels? One strategy is to look at the liver, but the other strategy is to look at something that no one looks at and that we look at Ayurvedically, which is your lymphatic system. Wow. Okay? So I think before we talk about the liver, which is like the cause of hot flashes, we should talk about what set you up for the liver to go south in the first place, to get overwhelmed in the first place. Okay? So that means, so here's an interesting thing. Women during their menstrual cycle, when they're before menopause, prior to the cycle, there is an internal detoxification that takes place. And that happens via your lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system surrounds your belly, your gut, your intestines. It's called the gut associated lymphatic tissue. So when that lymphatic tissue gets congested, your belly will swell. Your legs drain lymphatic waste through the gut associated lymph. And if that gut associated lymph is yucky, then you're going to get accumulation of sluggish circulation or cellulite or extra weight around your hips and your thighs, right? Wow. Now, so, and, and how does that lymph around your gut get yucky is because now we know that we, produce, we process all of our stress through our intestinal tract. 95% of your serotonin, which makes your mood happy and stable, it goes through your gut. We know we have, you know, trillions of microbes that make all the neurotransmitters that handle stress are in your intestinal tract. When you're under stress, those good microbes um, become 
you know, depleted and you lose your good bugs and you get a whole bunch of bad bugs. And that's a really good science now. We know that your stress, when you're under a lot of stress, your good bugs get to get depleted and your bad bugs proliferate. So when that happens, you lose your ability to make those neurotransmitters. Your gut can get dried out, you get constipated. When you get constipated, uh, the little intestinal tract gets irritated, they make a lot of mucus, then you get a loose motion, then you go from dry to loose, from dry to loose. You're, you, know, you know, your stool is sort of like variable. And a lot of folks, women, men included, the, the intestinal health is okay, but it's not wonderful. And so that's a great place to start and to look because if that's yucky in there, then the lymph around the gut's gonna be yucky. You're gonna gain extra weight around your belly. Now here's the thing. Oh, that Prior happens. to your menstruation, right? There is an internal detoxification before menstrual fluid happens mm -hmm. through the lymph around your belly. So if you, and this is the question you wanna ask like your, 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 your group, is if you have um, a swelling of your breast or tenderness of your breast prior to menstruation, breaking out around your mouth, holding onto more water, bloating, prior to the cycle, that's your body internally dumping waste into a congested lymph system that's pushing it out through your breast, through your skin, and creating all these problems. So that's a, a dead giveaway that your detoxification channels are a little compromised but nobody tells you that because no. you could have fixed that years ago. <laughs> and if you fix that, then, then say, if you don't have, if you have those lymph congested problems, then all the waste and the onus of all that detox, not to mention it makes your lymph congested, your skin break out, your breast tender and swollen, but also puts a lot of extra pressure on your reproductive system to get the waste out. And where does the extra waste go? Back to your liver. Oh no. Into your blood <laughs> causing a hot flash. Oh my God. So that's the mechanism. So we want to have strategies to do one, you know, evaluate the quality of the intestinal mucosa, your microbiology. Number two, the lymph around your gut's got to work really good. Mm -hmm. And number three, make sure your liver is functioning really well. I'm so excited to learn this. It's the, the gut is number one. So yeah. it's like the little brain in your belly. And they actually do. They call it the second brain. That's exactly what they call it because they know that you know, and in fact, there's a, there's a thing they call the gut-brain access, where these little microbes travel on this highway between your gut and your brain. And they've done studies where they take little kids and they take a measurement of the bugs in their gut and they can tell if those kids, when they grow up, are gonna be artists or engineers or scientists, they can predict that based on the gut microbes. So, and we also know that our, our microbes are really sensitive to stress. So when you stress them out, they go south and they become problematic and then you don't make the neurotransmitters, you don't think as good, your mood is not as stable, it creates a lot of stress. This is also, of course, the very new science, but you know, this is what Ayurveda knew about thousands of years ago. They said, you know what, it's really important when you eat your food to relax and be calm, not be stressed out, not be violent. It was really, I mean, if you think about Gandhi and Indian culture, they were like so peaceful. And it turns out, now we know that our bugs really like peace. You know, I mean, our ancient humans, I mean, they got, maybe they got chased by a lion like once a year or whatever. Right, right. But it wasn't like every single day being chased by some wild animal. It was like mostly just chilling with nature and, you know, just really, you can imagine living, you know, 10,000 years ago, there was nothing to do, right? I mean, just hang around. Hang out, digest. Right. And in other countries, it seems like they do that as well. In America, it's like, go, do, be faster, more. Yeah. And so people are eating on the run or eating in their cars. Or the worst is they're eating in front of television where people are getting killed and stuff. It's ridiculous. It is. And we have, there is science now to show that when, when people are, you know, watching people, you know, I'm not going to say beheaded, but, you know, I mean, you know, all the stress that we do when we're eating our food, that Ayurvedically char charges, emotionally charges your food and therefore your microbes. And I just like, and I just think, you know, we now know what you eat, you become microbiologically. But what does that really mean for our future? You know what I mean? Yes. It's really, really crazy. And there's science. They took the poop out of an anxious mouse and they put it into a calm mouse and the calm mouse got anxious. They took the, pop, the poop out of a fat mouse, put it in a skinny mouse and the skinny mouse got fat. They know for a fact that so much of who we are is based on what we call the 90% because 90% of the human body is microbes. And we now are realizing how sensitive they are. And that's what Ayurveda talked about. I mean, in so many ways, he talked about, you know, how to live in sync with the natural cycles, go downstream, how to maintain a level of calm on the inside so you can be active on the outside, you know. But, right. but the calm on the inside was key because that creates the connection to the rhythms of nature. There's actually a thing now they call it genetic noise. 
a scientist called genetic noise, uh -huh. where our genes are so stressed out, they can't hear the natural rhythms of nature. Like beach whales, you know, like they must have lost the signal, I mean, something like that, right? We don't really know what happened, but obviously they lost their way, right? And we have, in a lot of ways, lost our way as well. So this genetic noise, I mean, is that what makes the whales get beached? Is that what that genetic noise keeps us from listening, connecting to those natural rhythms? And that's why I love Ayurveda. And that's what we do with our newsletter. We put, what we put out is we, we're constantly proving this ancient wisdom with all this modern science. And it's so profound that I don't even know how they knew this stuff thousands of years ago. But today we're learning more and more about how important it is to connect with those rhythms and our microbes, which are 90% of the cells in the human body, depend on that connection, and in a lot of ways we've lost that. So another thing that I think is interesting, because you said we're so stressed out, we're going 90 miles an hour. And this is a weird thing, and it's a very delicate issue that I'm gonna bring up now, so help me not offend anyone here, okay? <laughs> um, in India, they do a thing where women, when they menstruate, they are, you know, not, you know, engaged in activity. They take what's called the time to rest. They just completely rest. Um, and that gets translated from in the West as, you know, women aren't good enough. They can't do what men do and all that. Um, that's one way of looking at it. But the other way of looking at it is that there, when, when women menstruate, there's a powerful energy going down into the pelvis for elimination mm -hmm. and reproduction. It's sort of an introspective time. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of one time of the month where women you know, naturally are more introspective. Well, I used to work with Martina Navratilova and she, she did the forward to body mind sport. And she told me clearly, she says, John, if I'm playing a tournament and I'm going into my master cycle. I'm not going to win. It's not going to happen. It's not there. Maybe, I don't know if you experienced that. Oh yeah, totally. It's just Absolutely. like, you know what? I'm here, but it ain't happening. This, <laughs> this is not my day. You know what I mean? And she said, it's just, I know it. So she just wasn't as strong. Now, I think a lot of women feel a little bit more introspective. They feel that inner pull, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the culture says, no, you got to go, 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 go. Right. And, and it's that very pull, hard. Yeah. So if, so what I suggest to my patients is like, you don't have to like, you know, hide in a cave or anything, but you don't have to schedule extra either. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of go in slow motion and just dial it down a little bit and let your body rest and don't schedule extra stuff and let that kind of go down. I actually think that's why women are more intuitive. And I mean, we know that if it wasn't for women, I mean, you know, the whole hunter-gatherer thing. They were like hunters. They sucked at hunting, basically. <laughs> it wasn't for the women gathering all the food and digging up all the everything. Right. The men would come back empty-handed on a regular basis, and they go, don't worry about it. They got it covered. You know, just wash up. We'll I'll take care of dinner, right? right? So they would take care of it. If it wasn't for the women gathering and digging, we wouldn't even be here, right? So, and, and they also were... They were really connected to the earth. I mean, studies show now that women in hunter-gatherer cultures have different microbes than men. They are functioning at a deeper level. And I think that part of the connection to that is this natural lunar cycle. And the natural and we've completely lost it. Blown it out. And, I, and I, I'm not saying that women should, like, do nothing. But I am saying that, you know, maybe experiment with giving your body a chance to let that cycle really do its thing fully and completely. As because when if you're doing a marathon at that time, then all the energy that was supposed to go down is going, going up, up, and you leave this guy down here in debt. And eventually, he's going to say like, "Hey, dude, I can't do this. I got nothing left to to menstruate, right. so I'm going to cause a problem." And that happened because you know we didn't listen for all those years, and and that's the cumulative effect. And I think, you know, so anyway, it's a very and delicate issue, And then does that tie issue, into, right? like, your adrenals, and then does it pull from there? Like, the, the fight or flight? It's like, okay, we have nothing left, now we're going to pull on everybody else. Okay. So then, then you totally get adrenal fatigue. And, and what happens is the, it pulls on your adrenals, number one. And your adrenals are this little tiny gland. They're really <laughs> stupid. They don't have much brain, right? So they burn out really quickly. So the adrenals go to your reproductive hormone and say, hey, you have all this testosterone and all this progesterone. You're not using it. You're not going to get pregnant and I don't think so. Can mm -hmm. I borrow that? Because those are direct precursors to make stress fighting hormones. So if you're under a lot of stress and you burned out your adrenals, your body will go to reproductive hormones to make it up. It'll go to your blood sugar and use that to stimulate you to crave stuff to make it up. It'll go to your thyroid to upregulate you know, thyroid met metabolic activity to make up and support the adrenals. So now your adrenal depletion that you're driving your body into exhaustion has borrowed money from reproduction, blood sugar, and thyroid. Three places that we have chronic, chronic problems in our culture. 
And so, so the adrenals will mess with a lot of other things. So a lot of times when I work with patients, I go, we have to pay back the reproductive debt, pay back the blood sugar debt, pay back the, you know, the thyroid debt, you know, and then of course help to create a lifestyle that's going with the current, not plowing against the grain every day. You know what I mean? That it's, that's, it's so enlightening. It's, it's, I, you know, I wish I, I knew you long time ago, but then, you know, during racing and I, I read body, mind, sport, and I did the, the listening phase, the performance phase and all of that. And I think that really kept me healthy, but then I had a missing link in between there, which is why menopause kind of went out the window. Um, but I do think that during menopause, women also want to take that introspective time because you really don't feel like being around a lot of people. Yeah. you like, it's, I think you, you have like major cave time. <laughs> Maybe it's just like, okay, you have not been going in for all these years. Now I'm going to demand it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to make you go in and check out and, you know, <laughs> and go in. And, and, uh, but it's also, I think, a, a major barring effect from a lot of other hormones, from, from reproduction and blood sugar and things like that. So those are, those are things that are, I think, you know, critically important. And to get started, it seems like you were talking about maybe a cleanse or something that what would be the, the best way to kind of like jumpstart this, you know, to get better, to get back on track, to help the body kind of say, okay, look, I've really messed up. Right. Now I really want to get back on track. How do we do this? Well, think, and what's the best way? Yeah, well, think about what happens. Let's take it step by step. Your stress plows away at your gut, right? Takes yeah. out your good microbes, makes you constipated, gives you loose stools. When you get irritation inside your gut, your bowels become irregular, variable. The lymph on the outside gets congested. When the lymph gets congested, it can cause a whole lot of stuff. It can make you tired, lethargic, make your hands, rings get tight in your fingers, ankles swell, break out, breasts become tender and swollen, allergies, sinus problems, headaches. Uh, your immune system can become compromised. Mm -hmm. It can cause pain in your joints because the joints can't drain the waste and you have achy joints and, 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 and even pain that moves around your body. When you wake up in the morning, you become, you're tired and lethargic and you're, and you're more stiff. Yeah. You know, these are all classic lymphatic issues, not to mention the cellulite and all that. Those are all the classic lymphy things. So mm -hmm. that's what set you up for the menopausal issue. And then, stay with me here for a second. The, 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 Intestinal waste starts to reabsorb back to your liver and makes your liver congested and your bile thick. Now your bile makes you burn fat. So if you don't have good bile, you don't burn fat good. Fat makes you, you know, helps you lose weight. But it also, um, what fat does is it, st it supports your nervous system so it keeps you calm. So it makes your mood kind of unstable ah. if you're not get a, you know, getting enough bile. Plus your bile makes you poop. No bile, no poop. It's the regulator of your bowel movements. So, and in, in one more thing it does, the bile, which is congested from all the yuck down in your intestinal tract, is it buffers the acid in your stomach, right? So let's say you don't have good bile flow, eat greasy food, you feel really yucky. Well, that's an indicator that you don't have good bile flow. So the stomach says, you know, there's no bile down there and I'm producing all this acid that's supposed to be buffered, you know, neutralized by, by the bile. Mm -hmm. But what if there's no bile? The stomach's gonna have to make a choice. If you look, burn up and get heartburn from all the acid staying in the stomach because the stomach mm -hmm. will just hold on to it. Wow. And eventually the stomach will say, you know what? She hasn't made any bile for years. I don't know what's going on down there, but we're going to dial down the fire and to make up for the lack of bile flow. So that means my digestive strength as I get older gets weaker. So if you eat wheat and dairy and corn and soy and nuts and anything hard to digest, you can't do it. And you get bloated and all these problems come. So you blame wheat and dairy, right? That's like in Boulder. Yeah, you're everybody's like, gluten-free like, or yeah. dairy-free. You get arrested in Boulder if you get caught with gluten, right? It's like terrible. So, but it's not really like, it's, the gluten is really not the culprit. It's the slow dialing down of our digestive strength. Mm -hmm. so, so people say, well, I'm toxic. I want to go do a cleanse. Remember, if you just go do a detox, where does the toxins go? The reason the body put it in your fat was to get rid of it because it didn't know what to right, do with it. Right. So if you do a detox and you don't reset all the pieces of the digestive puzzle that I just mentioned, you're just going to move the fat from one toxic fat cell to another. Oh my gosh. Which is going to include your brain, right? Actually, oh my it's one gosh. of the right, 40% right. fat. Right. So when wow. you do a cleanse, be really careful what kind of cleanse you do. Make sure that there's some understanding of resetting digestive strength because your digestive strength is your detoxification mm -hmm. ability. So, so what we do in our, our Colorado cleanse is we actually do a major digestive reset for folks and then we do the cleanse and that's what makes, that's what makes the most sense. And, and how we do it is sort of simple. Um, 
And you've done it before. Oh, yeah, right. Where you, take, it, where, where you take the ghee, which is clarified butter. Yeah. And you take it every day. This is really interesting how it mm -hmm. works. You take ghee every day for, for like seven days. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a two week cleanse, there's like a pre and a post cleanse. But the idea of the main cleanse is a seven day uh, taking of ghee in the morning when you eat a no fat diet during that time. And if you eat the ghee, your body has to burn fat, right? Because it's ghee. It's basically it's clarified butter. And then if you have no fat during the day, then what will happen is. Um, if you have no fat during the day, then what will happen is um, uh, the, the body will continue to burn fat throughout the, throughout, the, uh, the burn, throughout the day. Now, if you had any fat in your diet, you would just burn the dietary fat. So the idea is no fat for seven days, mm -hmm. and, and we give you all these different recipes to make that happen, but then you take the ghee, and that forces your body to burn fat. Now, the toxins in your body are all fat-soluble, heavy metals, environmental pollutants, pesticides, preservatives, right. you know, all that stuff, that, that yucky stuff is fat-soluble. So we want to get the body to burn fat, and studies show that when you do this ghee cleanse, you burn, they study 13 different fat-soluble cancer-causing chemicals were released Amazing. for three months afterwards. So it's pretty cool and pretty well documented. Mm -hmm. They call it lipophilic detoxification. You stick the fat in the body, it attaches other fat and pulls it out. That's how it works. Yeah. So it's really neat. And guess what? They have found now that there's little microbes. Like I'm all about the microbes now, right? I they love have it. Little microbes in your gut. One of them is called Clostridium butyricum that, that makes ghee for a living. That's its job. What? Yeah. Fantastic. You ever, inside you. Inside you. There's little <laughs> bugs that make ghee. They make what's called butyric acid. Butter got its name from, or butyric acid is the fatty acids, the right. fat inside of butter. They call it butyric acid. Well, that butyric acid is made by little bugs in your gut. And ghee is concentrated butter or concentrated butyric acid. So how did they know thousands of years ago that if you take ghee in your body and your gut, does all these really cool things. You have a whole cleanse based around ghee. And now we know there's bugs that make ghee and that ghee, they have found out the science shows that ghee is the number one energizer for the cells of your colon, the number one driver for your immune system in your gut, where 80% of your immune system lives. And it's also um, the food for all the other microbes in your gut. It's like, wow. And they have little bugs. We all have little bugs in there that make ghee if you don't get enough in your diet. And this is the first week of the cleanse. Right. Right. So, Fantastic. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, the, the cleanses work so well. And that, that in the ghee, it helps your gallbladder flush. Mm -hmm. It heals the intestinal wall. And then it also has that lipophilic pulling effect. So it does an overall digestive reset and a detox at all at the same time. And this is so different than the other cleanses that they have out there, you know, like, you know, eat nothing and this is your cleanse and, or, you know, just juice fast or, you know, just do water or do ultra clear or these, these products that it's crazy, you know, so the, this is really a solid foundation to get healthy and well and to detox really safely and gently and thoroughly. Yeah. And you feel fantastic. I've done this and you feel amazing. You feel like you could just like go, you know, it's like it sets you up for the summer, which is kind of the purpose. And the thing that I tell our cleansers all the time is if you're feeling uncomfortable or you're straining, then we have to let me give you ways to dial it down. You're mm -hmm. going too hard because the body won't burn fat if you're under stress. So many of the cleanses are in this like major starvation endurance event, feeling yucky, <laughs> and your body's going, she's crazy, store as much fat as you can, as soon as you can, right? So the idea here is that if you're having trouble, you're going too hard, dial it back down, find a comfortable way so your body feels safe enough to burn the fat. When you burn the fat, that becomes, and that's the thing that our culture has screwed up because of all the stress and going so hard. We have lost our ability to become good fat burners right. between eating six times a day, between all the stress that we're under, between, you know, this is what happened, right? 60 years ago, the, the American Heart Association said that cholesterol was bad. And that changed lunch menus. It oh. changed how manufacturers made their food. And the really cool thing is this week or next week, the government has going has they have already taken cholesterol off the off the, the, the number one public enemy watch list, the nutrient <laughs> concern list they call it. Yeah. Which means that the government is going to do what they did sixty years ago, only they're gonna bring cholesterol back. Food companies are gonna make foods differently. No, it's not going to be no more zero. of that fat-free stuff, right? Yeah, it's not going to be zero cholesterol anymore. School lunches are going to change. It changed how we ate for the last 60 years. And then in 1980, what they did was 
they subsidized farmers to grow wheat and corn for basically free. So they could sell it for pennies on the dollar. So the manufacturer's like, okay, cholesterol's out, good fats are out, so let's just pump it full of sugar because there's only two sources of fuel the body can burn, sugar and fat. So if you take away the fat, what we've been fed for the last 30 years is sugar. And that means you can't eat and make energy last. You gotta eat all day long. Right. Because you're not hungry, or you're not satisfied. <laughs> And that's what happened to us. And now, oh my God, the government is going to make a, a statement any day now and say, okay, guys, school lunches are going to change, manufacturer foods are going to change, everything's going to change back to fats are okay again. They're not going to the good fats. The good fats, yeah. The no good fats. hydrogenated fats. Yeah, no trans fats, no hydrogenated fats, right. but the good fats that they took out, which is, you know, amazing that we are sort of, a lot of us, you know, are sort of the, the result of, in the pre-diabetic epidemic, oh, it's right. a result of that. Absolutely. The weight gain, the mood instability, is because we don't burn fat as a culture. We, we were sort of, we're little guinea pigs, and we're just living the wrath of that decision 60 years ago. That's, that's crazy. I know when I was racing, I was eating probably 90% fat. I still have. I eat so much fat, but the, all the good fats. Yeah. I was, um, ever since I met John, I've been on the, the wonderful... Were you ever a snacker, I wonder? Um, I, I wasn't, you know, in triathlon, when you go out and you're like, if you bonk, you're like starving. So I just had a little snack with me. Yeah. But if you eat right, you're never that hungry. Yeah. And um, I never really felt like it. Actually, I always feel right after and I'm not yeah. a huge snacker. No. Yeah. Yeah. If you have fat, you, you don't need it. I think if you don't have the fat, your brain's like, help me. Right. You know? And there's nothing wrong with having a snack here and there. But if you have meal snack meal snack meal snack oh, meal yeah. snack eventually the body forgets you know it doesn't have to burn in its fat it just burns the meal and the snack the meal and the snack the meal and the snack so you really want to what we're trying to do is say hey guys let's reset the body to make energy last again like we like, like we all have the genetic ability to do and make energy last by having a meal and nothing in between breakfast and lunch nothing between lunch and mm -hmm. supper nothing between supper and breakfast and reset fat burning that's Critical. In fact, we did a study on that on my three season diet book, and we found that people not only did they lose weight by just eating three meals a day, no snacks, we measured their anxiety, depression, cravings, fatigue, exhaustion, and insomnia. And all of them, within just two weeks of getting off the snacking, were significantly improved. Wow. So, you know, that was me just sit down, relax, and fill up your gas tank. And then if you're going to drive from you know, like here to Kansas, you're not going to put $2 of gas in your car. Right. You're going to fill it up. Right. And, and a lot of us say, well, if I eat too much, I can't digest it. Well, if that happened to your car, you wouldn't say, okay, I'm only going to put $2 in my car every 10 miles because I, my car stalls when I put too much gas in it. Right. That's not <laughs> how you would you take it to the mechanic and say, come on, fix my car. But we don't do that. We just stop eating and we start eating little meals all day long. So let's, that's what we're talking about. Let's reset digestive strength. Let's shovel out some of the yuck and the fat cells and get this thing back to where it was. And then begin to digest like an 18-year-old again. Because you can do that. You don't have to get older and weaker and, and, and sluggish and tired and all that. It doesn't have to happen. We can age gracefully. Absolutely. We want to feel good forever. Yeah, right. And doing the cleansing. And this cleanse is going to come up. Um, I think it opens in March. Right. And um, it starts in April, right. and it's the perfect, it's the season, you know, it's the season for cleansing. So I think it's, it's super important to do that. It can help all of these things, menopause, weight loss, um, stiffness in your joints, everything. It's going to help your brain. It's, it's, it's stupid not to do it. There's, it's, it. there's no reason not to do this cleanse. It's, it's fantastic. It's well thought out. It's yeah. like coming from the best source ever. But it's also, and there's, you know, we, twice a year we do the cleanse as a group. So we, mm -hmm. have, we have sometimes like 800 people from around the world cleansing. And you get emails from me every morning. There's lectures and videos and question and answer sessions. And there's online forms. We have all this like support to kind of hold your hand through the process. You get a book and a kit and all the herbs. You get seven days of, of food that comes with the cleanse kit. So it's pretty neat. And then, and you can do that with us twice a year and this is coming in the end of April is when we actually kick it off yeah. and the, I think registration early bird starts in March um, but you can do it anytime you want it's called the anytime cleanse you can do it on your own whenever you want you don't have to do it with us but a lot of times the first time it's really nice to you know you know get all the info you really learn about right. what's happening in your digestion learn about the fat burning learn how to carry the ball after the cleanse into the rest of your life so you really make some permanent changes I think it's really smart to be guided through the first one like, yeah. and you learn you get it's such a great education and just listening to John's podcast and going on his website and learning all of the things that he's done, it's, it's really enlightening. It's amazing for me. I loved it. Good, 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 good. Yeah, so I, you know, join us. It's a great cleanse. And um, yeah, we're also in my newsletter, I, I want to mention about the lecture about women's health is um, we put out 
three newsletters a week. And our whole thing is proving the ancient wisdom with modern science. That's our thing at lifespot.com. And there's a couple articles I think you might be interested in that are, that are, there's like 500 videos and there's 500 articles that are free for everybody to watch. Um, and there, there's a woman's health section, which is great. And in there, there's an article called, It Might Not Be Hormonal. And the reason why it might not be hormonal, because it might be lymphatic congestion that we talked about. Right. And if you get the lymph to drain, then all of a sudden, all the many I've seen, and that's why I wrote the article, so many of my patients with, with, with female problems, they go away when you drain the lymph. You don't do anything for the hormones. We don't even touch the hormones and they get better. So the idea was it might not be hormonal, you know, and that was a great article. There's like another article in there called Protect Your Breasts about and understanding how to do that, which also talks about lymphatic flow. So there's some really cool articles that are archived that I think are critical that will sort of get you more information about what we talked about today. And there's a whole detox section of articles there. You can, you, can, you know, learn and, and watch some of the videos and, and read some of the articles that are there. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of tons of free information for you to, to read and watch videos to kind of understand how to get that digestive system back on track and get the lymph system back on track and boost and support yourself through, uh, you know, obviously menstrual issues, but also menopause as well. And feel good forever. Yeah. I mean, John, you know, we used to race a long time ago, so it was a long time ago when we were racing, and we, we've been able to keep going and feel good our whole life from yeah. continuing these things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, I think, so the foods and things like that to help with menopause, do you want to cover that, or do you feel like that's just the cleansing part? Well, or? I think the foods are important, and we can, we can sort of um, talk a little bit about that and, and, and wrap up with foods, because there's so much to talk about with foods, but the, the thing that is the most logical thing, right, with food, is that nature has been feeding us dramatically from season to season to season. Mm -hmm. I, I read a study that just blew my mind. They said that a deer has the microbes to digest bark in the winter, and uh, in the summer, their microbes change and they have microbes that digest leaves, right? And if the deer were to actually eat bark in the summer, and they didn't have the microbes for bark in the summer, it could cause such a level of indigestion, it could kill the deer. Wow. And I was like, what? If, you, if deer eat out of season, they die? Or they could die? I was like, and we eat out of season like regularly? All the processed foods, I don't even know what right. season it came from, it was grown right. like five years ago. No one even knows, right? <laughs> The bread sits on the counter for a week or a month or two and doesn't go bad. Every look in yeah. your fridge, how much stuff's been there for months and months and months. If it was actually, you know, natural, the bugs would eat it, it would go bad, but how much stuff in your fridge and your pantry sits there and not doesn't go bad? That's the stuff the bugs won't eat, and you're ninety percent bugs, so we gotta think about that. So the idea, so what I did was I was so I wrote a book called The Three Season Diet, which was about eating with the seasons. Loved it. But I was like so inspired by that study that we created a thing called the three season diet challenge and every month we put out a, a packet of information including recipes from emma frisch it's mm -hmm. all free from we ask recipes from the food network from with emma frisch all the research that i find about seasonal eating and the microbes the videos that i've done articles it all comes in a monthly packet so you get that you go okay what's my plan to get a little bit more connected to nature this month and we're, we started it um in february i think or january i think we started in january but we're nature's new year is in the spring so it's really starting right now and and we're gonna i'm gonna think to do it for the rest of my life and just make it for free because i just love the idea that people get more motivated to learn how to eat with the season so mm -hmm. that is you know really the bottom line is there are foods that are dramatically changing from season to season there's microbes that come out of the ground into the plants that become our microbiome that become our 90 percent of us and they're supposed to change from season to season and who knows that nobody tells you that <laughs> Nobody even understands that when you spray a, a, a plant with, with pesticides, oh. not only do you eat the pesticides, you killed all the microbes that provide food or that are the 90% of who you actually are. So another That's really, a huge point. That's huge. The yeah. GMOs and all of this that's going on, it's, it's crazy. And, and we don't know what they do to our, to our microbes. No. I Nobody mean, There are probably no microbes. They're probably like... Alien yeah. microbes. To be like microbe free, you know. <laughs> like that's the new thing. <laughs> microbe yeah, get your microbe free food here, right? Like really? Oh my god. Yeah. You know, soon we're gonna like have a war against our microbes, you know. Uh, I think it's been happening. Yeah. Well they outnumber us, thank God, by a yeah. lot. Which is, which is really good. Yeah. 
<laughs> but so from an eating point of view, you know, really check out this free, free it's on my website on the, in the right, you just click on it, put your email, first name, email address, and then you just get this thing for free. It's super cool. You'll love it. And, and it doesn't even matter if you do it, just start to get in the back of your mind, like go to a restaurant, hey, this is a more of a seasonal selection mm -hmm. than this. It can be super low key. You know. And so that's important. That's the three season diet challenge. That's right. And then the other one that we're talking about is the Colorado cleanse that's happening in April. Right. Starting the early bird registrations in March, which I will be on. Right. Sounds good. I'll be the first one on that. I think we've got it. So, and, yes, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's really awesome because John's going to be doing like a 20% off of the group uh, Colorado cleanse and a, a free weight balancing book and a free sh uh, blood sugar secrets ebook. Yeah. So, we have so these. these are some gifts for the, the questers. So yeah. how are we going to do that? They, um, so if you go on to, um, so we will, if you, we will send you um, an email okay. with an offer that you'll get. If you're watching this call, watching this thing, we'll send you, because you, you're watching, we have your email, we'll send you a special offer that will include a free gift, which is the weight balancing ebook. The one I talked about where everybody lost, they didn't just lose weight, their mood, stability, and sleep all got better. We're going to send you that research in the ebook to how to do that. Yeah. We're going to send you a free blood sugar ebook because that's like crazy. That's like an epidemic. Amazing. So you get that for free and you get 20% off the Colorado Cleanse, which is coming up. And we'll send you an email that'll give you all that offer. You just click on those things and you get them for free. Oh my gosh. So just not one person wins, everybody wins? Everybody Wins, yeah. Oh my God! Everybody's gonna win. Yeah. This is crazy. It's like it's like everybody gets a trophy. Yeah, it's oh, great. I love it when everybody <laughs> wins. This is great, yeah. and the microbes are gonna be happy. Your belly's gonna be happy. This is gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Oh, absolutely. So I'm so happy that I had this opportunity to meet with John and to share with you guys some of the wisdom, the ancient wisdom combined with the new wisdom, and um, just well grounded. And I just love it. So I'm really, I feel fortunate and blessed to have run our paths across. So. Yeah, well, Yay. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, John.